Hey folks, today we're about to dive into Quentin Tarantino's intricate cinematic universe, unraveling the deep references and layers of meaning in Kill Bill. This is a film that goes far beyond the surface, and we're here to explore every nuance and homage. So, come along with us and stop being a fake cult. Kill Bill plunges viewers into a revenge journey led by the Bride, portrayed by Uma Thurman. The plot kicks off when the Bride is left on the brink of death during her own wedding, but miraculously survives and wakes up from a coma determined to seek vengeance against her assailants. The storyline is structured into two distinct parts, Kill Bill, Volume 1, and Kill Bill, Volume 2, each focusing on different aspects of the Bride's journey. In the first part, the Bride confronts members of the Deadly Viper Assassination Squad, a group of assassins led by Bill, played by David Carradine. The squad members include Oren Ishii, Lucy Liu, Vernita Green, Vivica A. Fox, Bud, Michael Madsen, and L. Driver, Daryl Hannah. The plot is propelled by the Bride's thirst for revenge, and Tarantino shapes it with direct influences from Japanese samurai films, notably the works of director Akira Kurosawa and kung fu movies, especially Shaw Brothers productions. These references are evident in the meticulously choreographed fight scenes, non-linear narrative structure, and stylized atmospheres. Moreover, the film pays homage to exploitation genres, featuring graphic and stylized scenes that reverence the characteristic elements of these movies, including exaggerated amounts of blood and meticulously choreographed fights. The soundtrack also plays a crucial role, incorporating music from different eras and genres to create a unique audio-visual experience. At the House of Blue Leaves, the confrontation scene is truly a cinematic work of art. This iconic setting serves as the stage for one of the most intense and visually stunning moments in Kill Bill. Quentin Tarantino's inspiration from Bruce Lee's Game of Death is evident, but the director goes beyond mere homage, infusing the scene with his unique brand of intensity. The scene unfolds as the bride, portrayed by Uma Thurman, infiltrates the House of Blue Leaves to confront Oren Ishii, played by Lucy Liu and her henchmen. The environment is a Japanese nightclub, filled with a vibrant and chaotic atmosphere, complete with neon lights, intense music, and extravagant decor. This setting significantly contributes to the visual aesthetic of the scene. The choreography of the fight is one of the notable highlights. Every movement, every strike, is meticulously choreographed to create a, a deadly dance between the bride and her opponents. The influence of martial arts cinema is apparent, but Tarantino adds his own unique approach, incorporating elements of his cinematic signature. The Kill Bill soundtrack is a symphony of emotions. The choice of Ennio Morricone in collaboration with RZA transcend mere soundscaping. Each note is a narrative element, amplifying the emotions of each scene while paying tribute to the classics that inspired Tarantino throughout his career. The soundtrack includes classics like Nancy Sinatra's My Baby Shot Me Down, 1966, which serves as the film's main theme, and Bernard Herrmann's Twisted Nerve, 1968. The whistled melody is used memorably in Kill Bill, contributing to the tense and peculiar atmosphere of the film. The animated and visceral segment featuring Oren Ishii is a cinematic masterpiece that brilliantly showcases the director's profound cultural influences. Drawing inspiration from the iconic Lone Wolf and Cub series, Quentin Tarantino not only embraces the realm of Japanese anime, but ingeniously incorporates it as a gesture of deep respect and homage to this revered art form. This animated sequence in Kill Bill Volume 1 transcends the conventional boundaries of storytelling and is a collaborative effort with the distinguished Japanese anime director Kazuto Nakazawa. In this captivating sequence, the visual narrative takes on a mesmerizing, animated form, serving as a dynamic and culturally rich interlude within the film. Tarantino skillfully weaves the traditional samurai influences of Lone Wolf and Kub into the animated fabric, paying homage to the source material while infusing his unique directorial flair. The collaboration with Kazuto Nakazawa, a renowned figure in the world of Japanese anime, elevates this segment to new heights. Nakazawa's artistic prowess and distinctive style seamlessly blend with Tarantino's vision, resulting in an animated masterpiece that not only contributes a unique layer to the overall narrative of Kill Bill, but also stands as a nod to the captivating visual aesthetics of anime. The choice to incorporate anime into the film reflects Tarantino's commitment to celebrating diverse cinematic influences. By seamlessly integrating this animated segment, he not only adds a layer of cultural richness to the narrative, but also pays tribute to the unique visual storytelling language of anime. 
This segment becomes a bridge between traditional cinematic storytelling and the vibrant world of Japanese animation, showcasing Tarantino's ability to traverse and blend different artistic realms to create a truly immersive and culturally resonant cinematic experience. Tarantino is known for his Easter eggs and pop culture references, and Kill Bill is a feast for enthusiasts. From the iconic emergence of the bride from the coffin to dialogue filled with quotes, each scene is a visual puzzle. For example, the iconic scene of the bride emerging from the coffin is the homage to a similar moment in the film The Thunderbolt Fist, 1972. Known for his passion for Asian martial arts films, Tarantino pays homage to this classic scene. The Bride's List, containing the names of all she seeks vengeance against, is a direct reference to the film Death Rides a Horse, 1967. The revenge plot and the enemies list are elements Tarantino borrows and masterfully reinvents. The yellow outfit worn by the bride, Uma Thurman, in the House of Blue Leaves sequence is a direct homage to Bruce Lee's iconic yellow jumpsuit in Game of Death, 1978. And these are just a few of the many references and homages paid by Tarantino. So, folks, this journey through the intricate details of Kill Bill was simply amazing. Quentin Tarantino is a true master at turning references into something completely new. Tell us in the comments which aspect surprised you the most, or if you noticed any reference we missed. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We're starting this project with a lot of care, and each subscription makes a big difference. That's it for today's video. Until next time.